Now that the California eviction moratorium is over, more things have changed. The 15-day notice for non-payment of rent is gone. It's out the window. We are back to a three-day notice to pay or quit, but it's not the same as the old one. There's an important difference. We are gonna run through the three-day notice to pay or quit. In fact, we're actually gonna run through a few of them. We're gonna show you the California Association of Realtors form. We're gonna show you the AOA form and stick around to the end because we're going to show you one that you could easily find online that is absolutely wrong. <laughs> hey there. Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates. We've been helping tenants and landlords and buyers and sellers navigate these crazy days in Southern California and beyond since the beginning of the pandemic. All the subscribers to our channel and our free weekly email newsletter know we've been tracking the eviction moratorium in California and nationally since the beginning. And this is a big change. We are going to run through the new three-day notice to pay or quit that you will use from October through March of 2022 if a tenant does not pay rent. And remember, we can't give tax or legal advice, but for the most honest and up-to-date real estate advice, subscribe to this channel. One more important point before we dive in, and that is if there's a local eviction moratorium, for example, in LA, it may mean that you're not able to deliver any sort of notice. So what you need to do, no matter where you are in California, you hire a good local eviction attorney to help guide you through the process. We have a link below to help guide you in finding a local eviction attorney. So if you're ready to dive into the three day notice to pay or quit, hit that like button and let's get started. Let's dive into the notice to pay COVID-19 recovery period rent or quit, otherwise known as the three day notice to pay or quit. So this is the brand new form from the California Association of Realtors. We're gonna go through two more, so hang in there, but we're gonna do this fast. So this is only for rent that's due between October in March of 2022, and it says that on this form. If there's rent from before, it says to use a different form. Well, that's a 15-day notice form. So it's important that you understand that's why you need to get an attorney involved. So if you have a tenant who owes rent before October and then isn't paying in October, you're gonna have to talk to an attorney to figure out exactly what needs to be served. And don't forget, in places with a local eviction moratorium, you may not be able to serve any sort of notice right now. So that's another reason it's important to talk to an attorney. So let's dive into this form. We're gonna go through this quickly. The top is always the same. It's gonna show you uh, who it's going to, and it's gonna show you the address for the property. And then if it's being sent to a different address for whatever reason, maybe to a co-signer, there's room for that. So number one is within three days, not including Saturdays, Sundays, and holidays, the resident either needs to pay the rent or move out. So those are basically their two choices. And if they don't, well, that's up to the attorney to take it to the next steps. That's why before you serve this, you talk to the attorney. So, and section two says, do not include any amount that was due more than a year prior for this form. That won't apply because this actually, this form is only good from October to March of 2022. So no rent on here will be older than a year, but where it becomes important again is if they owe rent before. So September 2020 to September 2021, that's rent that a landlord was supposed to receive 25% by the end of September and if you didn't, you're gonna to have to talk to an attorney to figure out what to do next. So B mentions a different form and that's where the rent that's owed will be calculated. So we'll discuss that form. It mentions the RPURC. We'll discuss that in a minute. Isn't it great? California Association of Realtors, the, the names they come up with. So next section, C, D, and E is about uh, who to make any rent payable to, where to take it, and if they're gonna drop it off what hours, on which days. So this is important, landlords, fill this out so that tenants, if they do have the rent and for whatever reason we're late, make it easy for them to give you your money, money by filling this out. So section three says essentially that a landlord can move forward with legal action, and that would be an unlawful detainer lawsuit, to go ahead and take possession of the unit if the tenant does not pay the rent or move out within the three days. So four is the difference. This is why this is a different 
form, a different three-day notice to pay or quit. You can't use the old ones from pre-COVID because of this language right here. This language was stipulated by AB 832, and it said that this must be on the three-day notice, the new one. And nothing crazy here, it's just that tells tenants that they can apply for rental assistance. And speaking of rental assistance, landlords, before you're able to move forward with an unlawful detainer, you are going to need to apply for rental assistance in the case of non-payment of rent by a tenant. This is what is required. So whether the non-payment of rent is due to COVID-19 or if it's not, if it's simply the tenant decided not to pay, doesn't have the money for some other reason, no matter what, a tenant who is not paying rent and being given this form, you must apply as landlords for rental assistance. And there's different things that happen if rental assistance money runs out, or the tenant doesn't cooperate, or the tenant is uh, not able to qualify. There'll be different steps and your attorney's gonna guide you through that. So the landlord's gonna sign here. Then we talk about this often, and we'll continue to talk about this. The delivery of a notice is almost as important as the actual notice and what's on it. They're both important, but delivery is very important to make sure that it is a valid notice. So the order for delivery of a notice is personal service. That's where you knock on the door, hand it to the tenant or one of the tenants. Next would be substituted service. Knock on the door, another person 18 years or older answers the door, no other tenants that are named are there, you can then hand it to that 18 year old or above person and that's called substituted service. The last and least favorable, but sometimes it, you have to do it, would be the posting and mailing. So you put it in a bag, stick it on the doorknob, I take a picture when I post, and then you're going to send this via mail, it doesn't have to be certified mail. I often do this and use priority mail because they don't have to sign for it, but you have proof. So this would be a case where you knocked on the door and no one answered. Then you could do posting and mailing. If you don't want to do this, landlords, you can hire what is known as a process server. And the process server will take care of this for a fee and fill out an affidavit showing that they have delivered the notice. So here is the COVID-19 recovery period unpaid rent calculation. That's the other form we mentioned. And this will be a pertinent, this will be included with the notice because it was mentioned in this notice. And down here is a breakdown on the rent that is due and the rent that's paid and what's unpaid. And you can see, again, very important, this is only for October through March. So once we get to April of 2022, we're gonna go to a different three-day notice, probably the original pre-COVID three-day notice. And on that notice, there will be a different form to go ahead and show any missed rent. But right now, for the time period from October 2021 to March 2022, you're going to use a notice that as we just showed you, and it's gonna to need to have only the rent that we've mentioned on there. And as mentioned, we have another three-day notice to pay or quit that you can use. This one's easier to get. This is from the AOA, the Apartment Owners Association. I have a link below so you can download this form and use this, but again, I advise you to talk with an attorney before delivering this notice. So this is for that same time period, we can't, <laughs> belabor it enough, this is what's specified in ABA 32. On this version, all the same stuff, uh, mentions the owner, calls them a plaintiff, the tenants or defendants in this. This is the notice, same thing. It talks about the amount of rent that's due. Now this doesn't actually only reference the rent from October to March, but I would you caution you, just as I cautioned you on the last one, discuss with an attorney, because there's enough lines here basically for that time period and nothing before. So you're not gonna be able to reference rent from September 2020 to September 2021 on this notice. Same thing on here that within three days, you must either pay the rent tenant or you need to move out. And then same thing where you can send the payments. And here is the magic language that must be included per AB 832, it's on here. And then there's a proof of service page as well. For their version, this is a separate page. You, only the owner has to fill it out. Again, you can hire a process server to take care of this for you. There's a link below for this three-day pay or quit notice. 
One more to show you, and it's an important one, so don't leave me out. And one more form to quickly show you, and this is one not to use. So here's what happens if you just Google it up, like my son Liam says. We Googled it up, a California three-day notice to pay or quit, and this was the top site that came up. And I'm not gonna mention any names, but this form was the California form. where You could be thinking, hey, this is the one, let's do it. But here's the problem, we look at it and it says 2013. So things have changed since 2013, but maybe it's not so bad, let's see. Maybe it's got everything I need. No, it doesn't. And this is why I tell you, don't just Google up forms. This does not have the required AB 832 language. So if you didn't hire an attorney and you delivered this notice yourself, this would not be a valid notice. So please, please be careful and give the proper notice. Make sure it has the required language. So what happens after the three-day notice to pay or quit is delivered? You ask your eviction attorney. They're going to guide the process. So again, we have a link below. Let us know if you have any questions about the three-day notice to pay or quit, and we'll do our best to answer or point you in the right direction. Leave that comment below. Of course, we'd love to have you subscribe to our free weekly email newsletter where we cover topics like this for tenants and landlords, plus market updates, and a whole lot more. I appreciate you tuning in and sitting through another Forms video. This has been Christian Walsh, real estate agent with Wire Associates, and we appreciate you.